to the Holy Land for the first time, it transforms the way you understand the Bible as the Word of God. When you come back again and again, it's almost like renewing your marriage vow. You grow deeper and deeper in love with the Word of God. You become aware of the fact that it's not just print on a page. The Word became flesh here and dwelt among us and died for us and rose again. How good can it get? How true can it be? When I come back again and again, the truth of it, the truth of the whole of it, just hits my heart and illuminates my mind. where our Lord walked, the physical things you can touch, the rock on which he sweat blood, the Sea of Galilee, which drew him in its beauty and peace, and all of the various pieces to share that with their families would be such a special gift. The Mount of Olives, part of our pilgrimage experience, is walking the steps, the Palm Sunday steps, with Jesus. So uh, our tour guides in 206, they, they have our large palms and you see hundreds of people walking down the Mount of Olives, moving through the Mount of Olives to the place of Dominus Flavit, where the Lord wept. He looks upon Jerusalem and he sees sheep without a shepherd. And he weeps, he's not angry, he's not throwing things around, he's not doing whatever, sometimes that we do in our lives. He looks and he pities. He sees sheep without a shepherd. And so for us, it's an example in our own lives. Things in our own lives that we see that we need to do. The approaches that we need to take. And it becomes real here in these places. I got to offer Mass at the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane, and it's a really powerful experience. It's a very unique church. Well, most of the churches here in the Holy Land are so unique. In the Garden of Gethsemane, the church of all nations, it has this interesting lighting that keeps it dark all around the space of the sanctuary and the place of the rock where Jesus prayed to his Father, our Father. That place is well lit, everywhere else is shadowy, and it reflects how Christ prayed there at night, how he was experiencing a dark night of the soul in a sense. And you, we enter into that as we approach the place of the altar, the sanctuary, and the place of the stone. We are in shadow ourselves until we reach the light of Christ. For me, it's like a retreat where I get to pray more often with the sites and with the scriptures in sight. And also I teach at our seminary 
And so now to integrate what I teach and what I've learned into how I lead, I feel like it's a fuller experience and I've really enjoyed it. Last night we had the privilege of having a feast here in Bethlehem. We were so warmly greeted by our brothers and sisters in Christ, fed wonderful food that um, they had specially prepared, you know, roasting the lamb for 10 hours. And then entertained um, by people who loved the Lord and wanted to help bring that joy to our hearts. And it was a great privilege to get to be together here. I use 206 tours to take seminarians to the Holy Land every January. And they have been, 206 has been so professional, so efficient, so prayerful and Catholic that we don't just go to sites, we pray at sites. And they're so flexible too. They're so good at what they do. We had a group of 200 that had to shift plans this time and within a day, everything was taken care of. So I exclusively use 206 whenever I come to the Holy Land. From the bottom of my heart, I know I'm speaking on behalf of Kimberly and our whole family who were here together. It's just like 10,000 thanks to God, but also to 206, to each and every one of our guides, our bus drivers, to all of the personnel who served us so generously, so sacrificially. May the Lord bless you a million times over. <laughs>